and you are the host. Perfect. Thanks again. Thanks, All guys. Right. Good luck. We've confirmed that we have Linda Baker present, uh, Luke Barber, Don Chapman, present. Sarah Coyle, David Forrest, Howard Hayes, Present. Linda Johnstone, yeah. Josh Lewis, Stephanie McDowell, Sue Orton, here, Cheryl Rose, here, Sarah Schwagel, All right, and our guests, Mark Peoples, present, and Amy Ellis, present. Thank you. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, it has to be five commission. I mean, it has to be um, commission yeah, yeah. members to make the quota. I guess don't make a quota. Yeah, right. I don't think we have a. I don't think we have a quorum. Yeah, no, no quorum today. Just, just the six. If someone else joins, maybe we can do some things. Okay. And can, can make, you ask the question? How many do you need to have to make a quorum again? Seven. Seven. Okay. Thanks. Um, what was I going to say? So, can, make note that um, we could not approve the amendments, and we have to approve them in September unless we get some other people late. Um, so we can't approve the minutes, so I'm going to move on to my report. And the last time we met, we were, uh, uh, it was announced that Carol Rodriguez is the new chair of the Older Adult Commission. And Carol and I finally uh, got in touch with each other. We had a nice conversation. Uh, she sent me their annual report which I think is also on the website. And um, we felt that there was some overlap uh, with the uh, Older Adult Commission and people with disabilities. Uh, she has someone on their commission. I think he's, I believe he's an architect and he's very well versed in universal, de universal design according to uh, Kara. So she thought he would be a good contact person as we make progress uh, through developing the um, UD audience. So I, I was pleased to uh, be in touch with her. And I think the last time I told you that I reached out to David Forrest he says he wants to uh, remain as a commission member, but he has trouble with the virtual setup. I tried to tell him that he could come in early and we could work out some troubleshooting, but he has not responded. Um, I have not heard from Sarah Swigel. I've reached out to her two or three times and have not heard from him. Um, if so, um, I'm assuming the minutes are gonna to go to her and if she reads them, she knows I'm trying to reach out to her to see if she wants to continue. Um, tomorrow, June 14th, Sarah and I are going to meet with uh, Lisa Clancy, who is the chair of the Disability Committee of the Council uh, with the other committee members, I don't know who they are at the moment, um, to present the annual report. Um, so that would be tomorrow afternoon. So that is sums up my report. If you have any questions for me, here's, uh, this is the time for it. I don't see any questions. We go on to the 
ADA coordinator report. I believe Matt has that from Kara. Go ahead. Yes, thank you again, Linda. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, read this uh, for the record. Um, so I was provided these notes from Carol. Uh, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to forward them on and get a response from her after this meeting. Uh, as I follow up to the conversation in the May meeting, the commission has three vacancies, which includes two for individuals with disabilities and one for an agency representative. Carol followed up with Jay Nelson regarding the application for Brandon Morris. Uh, we have not received his application, but Jay thought maybe he had just completed part of it. Carol provided Brandon with additional instructions and contact information for Jay if he needed additional assistance. Carol attended three full days of the virtual annual ADA symposium. She reported as always, the sessions provided good information, but a full eight hour day with a virtual format was difficult. The symposium will be held in person next year in Kansas City. Uh, as a reminder, the accessibility work in the council chambers will begin on June 29th and is scheduled to be completed on September 5th. The council meetings will be held virtually during this time it looks like the work will all be completed in house rather than hiring contractors. And her final note is that the next meeting of the Missouri ADA coordinators will be held on June 22nd and Carol's planning on attending. Uh, she learned from the ADA symposium that Missouri is one of the few states in the nation that has formed a group like this. That concludes Carol's report. Um, if anybody wants a copy of that report, uh, please comment in the chats and I'll be happy to send that to you in the email. I, I do have a comment. Um, I know she attended the ADA uh, symposium. If she could just highlight, how do I say this? Highlight certain things that apply like accessibility or communication or anything that she thought was would be relevant to the commission. I would like to know what she learned um, so we could share it among the commission members just to hi highlight um, ones that she felt that would be important to the commission. I will absolutely uh, make that request for Carol to share that. Anyone else have questions about the report? I don't, but I did put a request in the chat, Matt. Um, take you up on your offer to send the copy. Thank you. Okay, absolutely. Okay. Um, so if there's no more questions or comments on the coordinator report, we go into old business. Um, Sue, did you? go to the last ODRA dot commission meeting? Yeah, I did. And piggybacking on what uh, Linda said after her talk with uh, Carol, uh, Dan, I think it's, Dan is also a member of the uh, older adult commission and he does an awful lot of architectural building. Uh, I think a lot of them are, are, are apartments or, or congregate type housing, not individual homes. But he's very, very knowledgeable and he would be really great to work with. Um, also at their meeting, they uh, talked about the feedback. They presented their annual report to their, um, the, the council as a whole and some of the feedback that they got. And it seemed to kind of wrap around the idea that uh, of representation, that there are two different districts that are not represented, District 4 and District uh, 6. And so, talking about trying to get adequate representation would be their focus. So I think, oh, and then of course they, I, I think I sent this to uh, to Carol and to Linda, uh, the um, our St. Louis County Library Association was awarded uh, this wonderful uh, accommodation accommodation for the uh, the grand pads. And there's very, very rare uh, that, uh, you know, for any of Christian uh, source was very, very excited about it. Um, I don't know whether there's any money involved in it, but a lot of pub publicity and hopefully that going forward with the grand pads uh, proposal that will help. 
Also, uh, Sue, that was a very good report. Um, and I would think that you and Sheila could consult with Dan when we start to d develop this UD audience. Um, but the other thing is, um, now it slipped my mind. It was something to do okay. uh, with, the, with the district. Um, yeah, there? so it seems like their commission is based on commission. There? I mean, based on districts. Yes. Yes, it is not the same kind of uh, uh, format representation. They really want representation from all the districts in St. Louis County. And there are two that they just can't seem to get representation on. And so they were talking do, about how best to go about that. Do we know what part of the county those two are located in? I believe one is South Trachis's. And the other's north, and I'm not sure whose it is. Okay, so one south and one's north. Yeah. Oh. Well, I live I live south, but I actually know a parent, but I don't know if she would serve. Well, she would be good for our commission. I don't know whether she could serve on the older adult commission. <laughs> she has two adult children with disabilities. As long as she meets the age requirement. Oh, I know what else it was, um, and this was kind of sad. Um, one of the uh, uh, commissioners, uh, uh, Zulima, uh, has been very, very active and very, very supportive of everything that the older adult commission has done. And she, because of health reasons, is going to have to resign. So that's going to fill up a tremendous gap. Um, I'm not good on last names, uh, so. That's why, but she she's she's just a very sweet person, and it was really kind of a uh, a sad ending to the uh, to the meeting. Yeah, it's kind of hard to find new blood. Yeah, I think that's kind of what people are are saying. You know, they don't. How do you approach somebody to 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 serve as as a volunteer? Um, one of the other things they were talking about is they have a lot of data the, that they've accumulated about, you know, either the use of the grand pads or where older adults live and kind of a follow along from the, the task force that was several years ago. And, you know, to present that data to people in St. Louis County, you know, they have, that, this is their comments, that they have the uh, interns, uh, interns and the uh, staff that would be able to filter out this uh, data and be able to present it back to this commission, but the commission should not have to present it to them as a fait accompli that they should be able to support the uh, commission in, in developing what the data means. Now I remember what I forgot. When you were talking about the gram pad. Yeah. In the last month's meeting, yeah, under old business, yeah, it says that I mentioned a thirty dollar rebate. I did not do that. Did you do that, Sue Orton? No. Well, I I don't know where this thirty dollar rebate is. Do you know anything about it? No. No. The only thing that I know about the grandpads is that. Uh, they were awarded the, the funding, but not all of the funding goes for new grand pads. It's also to renew the subscription. Let me read this. Okay. Matt. Oh, I know what it was, Linda. Um, what was it? I think that this was, there was an announcement someplace in the news that some of the companies are offering a $30 rebate uh, for internet services for people with disabilities or low income. I don't know if I'm true on that. Does that ring a bell? That rings a bell, but see the Recreation Council, which I serve on their board, yeah. talk about that too. So um, I don't think I said that, but- I don't Matt, think you either. Linda, I don't think you said it. So that's, that's something that you- yeah. The idea of the $30 is, is, is right. 
Well, Matt, could you make note to Kayla, even though we did not approve the uh, May's minutes, under old business, second paragraph, maybe Howard said this, but it starts off by saying Howard Hayes states there's a $2 million funding. Then the second sentence it has my name in it. I did not mention any $30 rebate. So I think that sentence, I think, Sue, Sue you might have mentioned it. I might have mentioned it since I might have read it, but I, it, so you might want to attribute yeah. it to me. I'll take so, the time. Okay. Excuse me. So the name Linda Baker needs to be deleted and put in Sue Orton. Sounds good. I will do that. that. Okay. Okay. So that it will be ready uh, okay. cool. in September. I want to do it while I'm thinking about it because. Okay. I'm glad you did that. Go on to other stuff. So did that include your report, Sue? Yeah, I, I also, I think what I'll, I'll try and do is do a little more research on that and see if I can come up with, you know, who those companies are. Okay, that would be good. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if Best Buy is Best I, Buy. Right I don't know. I think it was a federal blurb that I read. Okay, well, if you can find out, that would be great. I'll, I'll look for it. This is Mark, um, DHS. Um, the the federal government has a they have a website where you click on it, um, similar to something for the COVID test, yeah. and you put your zip code and whatnot in there, and then they tell you exactly who the providers are that are providing the rebates or the oh, subsidies cool. for the um, for the internet. Okay, so what what is the uh... What's the website? Yeah. As y'all go on with the meeting, I'll research it and, and, and put it in the chat. Perfect. Thank All you. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mark. Um, now we're moving on to a topic that we worked long and hard on, University Design Task, Design Task Force update. Sarah? Okay, so you may remember from the last meeting, we talked, um, we had had some feedback on our ordinance from um, the uh, Alliance for Inclusive Design people, and their feeling that, um, their, or their suggestion rather, that we uh, pursue, rather than pursue an ordinance, that we pursue um, property tax uh, rebates or whatever, whatever you want to call it for people who for built for buyers who uh, opt for UD uh, features and, and designs. Um, we did meet with um, Lisa Clancy. We presented our proposal, uh, what we want. We told her the feedback that we had gotten and uh, she is going, she has uh, asked the um, legal department to research that issue of uh, property tax uh, rebates, uh, whatever, rebates, I guess, um, reductions. She thinks there might be, you know, some legal issues with the state, but uh, we haven't heard back yet. So I mean, I imagine that takes some time to get that. So we, we need to wait on that. Um, also, we have been, uh, Amy has been working to try to get the meeting with the Home Builders Association. We thought we had a meeting set up last Thursday, but it didn't work out. So we're going to talk just very briefly at the end of this meeting with her on some possible dates to propose to the Home Builders and see if we can't get that, uh, that meeting underway. So that's where we are. We have not made any substantial progress, uh, well, a little bit. We did meet with with Lisa, and she also wants to talk with um, another person on the council whose name escapes me right now. Dunway, Dunway. Kelly Dunway about it, because she knows that Kelly is 
also very, uh, very supportive of UD. So maybe we'll have something more substantial to re hopefully have something way more substantial to report in September. Okay, yes. Um, I was glad that we were able to talk to Lisa. So hopefully we might get something, hear something, not get something, but hear something tomorrow when Sharon and I meet with the committee and the council. Any questions for Cheryl? Hi, Linda and Cheryl. This is Brandon. I was wondering if and when you guys get the meeting with the uh, home builders, will it be an in-person meeting or will it be a virtual meeting? Well, I had suggested it be an in-person meeting because I thought it might be too confusing with the number of people that would be there um, between our group and their group, that it would be too many people. It would be hard to, uh, you know, to, to coordinate it and to make it work. Mm -hmm. um, but there and this is Amy, Amy jumping in. The, and the yeah. HBA is uh, willing to meet in person. So we're angling for an in-person meeting. Okay. And um, Amy, while you're here, um, I believe Sue Orton is the one that's the connection for the Board of Realtor Building. So maybe you want to connect with her because there was something about wanting to be in a neutral setting and the Board of Realtor Building was suggested. And one time Sue Orton said, she could arrange that. Is that right, Sue? Uh, I yes, but I was not, you know, tuned into this specific date. You know, I thought uh, that Amy was handling that uh, date anyhow. Uh, but again, if if we have some advance notice that uh, we need to have some space, I can inquire with the St. Louis Realtors whether we can have a room. But I need to have a date, you know, or time frame in mind. Perfect. Thank you, Sue. I knew there was somebody. I just couldn't remember who that person was, but I will remember that next time. By the time we had a date last time um, from the HBA, it was too late to pull everybody on the task force together and reserve an in-person spot. Yeah. So we're yeah. going to try again, but I'm glad, well, Sue, you will be hearing from me. <laughs> and, and Amy, do you have Sue Orton's uh, email? Yes, I do. Thank you. Yeah, so. back what what Cheryl said, the other reason for doing a, a face to face in person is that we would like the Home Builders Association to see paperwork of what we've done, you know, and see have something in their hands to know what kind of progress we've made. Maybe the difference between what the resolution currently is and what we're doing for an ordinance. Just a general feedback. You can get a lot more on a face to face than you can over the WebEx or Zoom. And and I would like to attend that meeting, but go ahead and do what you, what you can, Sue and Amy, because I'm going to be gone 10 days that you may have the meeting during that time. So proceed with it because it's important to make some progress. But uh, if you can wait to July, that's great because we're not uh, Megan with the commission uh, to September. Right. Well, yeah, everybody has vacations and things like that to work in. That's why we'll talk at the end because, you know, yeah. we, we've got a lot. Yes. To yes. Um, okay. Any, uh, any other comments, questions for Cheryl or Universal, Universal Design Task Force? If perhaps when you guys um, are considering the dates or the day of the week, I would be happy to attend if it's on a Friday where I can, uh, you know, be a individual who is utilizing a power wheelchair who can give real testimony as to the importance to it. So if a Friday can be uh, farmed out 
to maybe make the meeting happen, I will be happy. Although I'm still just a visitor, I will be happy to participate if it's helpful. Thank you, Brandon. And it's really important that you talk to Jay so we can finish up your application so you can be a voting member. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna push that. <laughs> um, okay, moving on to any new business. Linda, I have something still under old business. Oh, which is, go which ahead. Is the taxi commission. The taxi commission has never gotten in touch with Brian Cho, who is the person that we recommended to them. I know Carol has emailed the head of that commission at least twice. Um, and um, I'm, I'm wondering if we should um, do something more, something more like a letter or a phone call directly from us or something. Because, you know, he's willing to serve. He'd be a great person for that. We really need it. I mean, I'm, I'm taking my son to Chicago next week. And, I mean, they have all kind of taxi services available there. We have nothing here. <laughs> okay. Good timing here. So, my thought is, Matt, if you can make note that Carol... And the, uh, is Brian sure can be in this email to expedite him fulfilling whatever protocols need to be happen for him to fill that vacancy? And does Brian, do you think Brian would know, could talk about service in Chicago and what we could do well, here in St. Louis? I don't know. I mean, I don't think this should fall on Carol because she's already tried. She's already sent two emails. We have to escalate this up. Higher. Okay. That, let me revise that. I need to know how I, how I, as the chair, can get a hold of whoever's the chair of the taxi commission. And I will reach out and tell them there is a candidate but I need Brian's information. So okay, Cheryl, well, I will email you Brian's information. Okay. So Matt, going back to Matt, if he can relay to Carol that I need to know who this commission is um, and how best to reach them. You know, whether it's, I need to pick up the phone and talk to him or write a letter or email. I will always CC Carol so she knows the communication. Okay, I will do that. Okay. Um, any other old business? I don't see or hear none, so I'm moving on to new business. Any new business? Chairwoman Lynn. Uh, so, maker. This is Mark. Yeah, I don't have new business, but I've put that link in the chat. Okay, go ahead. Um, so it's in the chat. Um, it's like www.whitehouse.gov slash get internet. Oh, okay. And you go on there and then it can walk you through the process. Thank you, Bob. Um, Okay, before I adjourn, you notice in the agenda it says the next meeting is September 12th. I would like to know if September 12th at one o'clock works for the commission members. Now, I know we don't have a quorum, but I would like to finish up 22 on one o'clock time. But come January, we, I like to hear from the commission members if they want to change the timing, uh, if that makes a difference in the uh, attendance. So, um, 
that so just keep that in mind if one o'clock second mondays don't work for you please let kara and i know and and please give us a suggestion don't just say it doesn't work tell me what will work for you i want to you know solve this okay um any other business before i join a join The only thing I want to mention that uh, Carol provided uh, to me is that the next meeting in September, there's a location with it. I guess it's going to be in person. Um, she said the plan is to do this meeting in person with the option for people to join virtually. Uh, we meet at the Department of Transportation building at 1050 North Lindbergh in Creve Core. This was our pre pandemic meeting place. So most of the group is familiar with that location. But there will also be the uh, opportunity for virtual as well. Yes, we were uh, agreed to do hybrid for people that have transportation issues. So, so, um, anyway, um, we'll see, see you. I'm getting ready to adjourn. We'll see you September 12th at one o'clock meanwhile enjoy your summer but keep cool and um brandon just one last word if you have any problems reach out to kara and i all right thank you bye-bye and linda thank sue you. and amy we need to stay on a minute and should i stay on yeah if you want to okay yeah take care right. everyone stay safe okay have a good summer thank you Thank you all. I'm going to uh, excuse myself and make uh, Linda the host. Is Linda staying on? Linda's on. Okay. Let me make you the host. So that way when I leave, it doesn't change. I, I saw Sarah Coyle. Did that make us have a quorum? Well, too late now. Yeah. Not, it's too late now. Yeah. I'm gonna reach out. Okay. I think we're, I I'm think ready. we're good to go. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Nice to meet you, Matt. Nice to meet you all too. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. So, uh, in in terms of dates, um, I'm I'm out of pocket for this week and next week. Uh, myself, so we're gonna, the, you know, let's look at after the fourth. I'm gonna quickly go get my calendar, which I should have brought. Right back. Yeah, I think we were rushing because we were trying to get that meeting in before today's meeting. Uh, right. Now that we don't have another meeting until September, that gives us a little more um, flexibility in terms of finding a date that works. And I don't know how long I'm going to be doing therapy, but um, I know I have something on the 5th of July. So um, maybe towards the end of that week, like the 7th or the 8th, and then the following week is at the earliest. So I've got stuff going on this, that, for that whole first week of July. I'm not going any place, but I got things going on. <laughs> uh, well, do do we just want to look at the week from the eleventh to the fifteenth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. I um, you know, I'm free every Thursday in July. If we want to try to stick with Thursdays, I'm I'm fine with that. All right, we can shoot for the fourteenth of July, and maybe we need, to, we need to give them several dates. Yeah. I, I was just going to say that. Oh, so, okay. All right. Um, do we want to stick with those? Like 14, 21, 28. Are there other days, Cheryl, that are good? Well, um, Mondays, except for the 25th. You know, I've got other little stuff in between. Uh, Thursdays and Fridays are clear on my Yeah. Account. Yeah. That's a good point. 
Okay. I'm usually available on Thursday and Friday, except for the 15th of July. So but Amy, that doesn't mean I can, if, if the 15th of July, if we can meet in the morning, I'll be available. Yeah, I can't meet the afternoon of the 28th. You cannot meet on the, the 28th? The 28th, yeah, in the evening, early evening. You mean, so the afternoon? Uh, yeah, I guess I could do that. Okay. So, Amy, are you yeah. still here? I am, yeah. Okay, so you want to propose the, the 14th, 21st, or 28th in the afternoon, or what were Early the, afternoon. Early afternoon? And yeah, what, I think we were looking at... Um, one o'clock. I'll say early afternoon, but like the last week, uh, we had narrowed it down to 1 p.m., but... Right. It was too late to make it actually happen when we got to that point. So I think a 1 p.m. would probably work for them. And then yeah. what, what Fridays are we available? Who had, I'm, not the I'm, 15th? The 15th, I, I, the 15th, I wouldn't be available in the afternoon. I'd okay. be available so in the morning. The, but the it's, 22nd, it's, are you available on the 29th? Yes, or I'm available. Two? Any Thursday and Friday in July, except some twist and turn. To make from Amy's purpose is to say any Thursday or Friday at one o'clock, except for the 15th. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And as soon as you get some sort of confirmation, then I would feel comfortable contacting SLAR. Okay. I told the um, my contact that I would. I would be emailing her this afternoon after we we met. So I'm going to shoot those dates to her right now. Um, I usually, uh, I mean, obviously, as you can tell, it usually takes a while to get any wrangling done on her part because she's trying to juggle multiple people's schedules on her end. Um, Amy, so, yeah. Do you know how many people she's looking to come? I think it's about five. Okay. That have different. Um, areas of expertise within universal design. Okay. Um, Susan, I wonder if we should invite Dan to this meeting. He's not a member of our commission, but he's a member of the older commission, older adult commission. What's your thought about that, Sharon, Sue? Well, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know him. I mean, I know him, he's very articulate. He knows his stuff, been an architect for a long time. Um, I don't know whether this particular meeting might be appropriate. Why don't we, I, you know, why don't we just forget about that? Pete Utrecht from Compass Designs, who's on the Alliance, who does build, he built that UD home that we went and looked at. I mean, yeah. one of the people, no, it wasn't him, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, he had offered to come to the meeting, and I, you know, we can decide maybe when we. Oh, get Jim! To... Not Jim. Oh, Jim. Jim! No, not Jim. This is Pete Utrecht. Right. He is a build. Pete. He's a builder. Okay. Um, was Pete the guy that was singing next to Jim in that even that we went to look at that house? I don't. I don't remember Linda. Okay. But he I, has built, he builds upscale UD homes, right. custom, custom UD. He offered to come. I don't know whether we want him or not. We can maybe decide once we get a date. But I, I just want to make sure we know what we're talking about. Right. But I, I don't think an architect would be as helpful as a builder. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe we should invite Pete because if he's a builder, he knows everything what the home builder people are doing. Yeah. The the thing is, is that Sue and I talked about when we thought we were going to have the meeting on Thursday, Sue and I talked a little bit about the agenda. And we decided that it's really, 
it's better to emphasize not disability, not accessibility, to emphasize universal design and the wide applicability. And that's why I'm not sure, like when Brandon brought that up, I, I don't, you know, we don't want to really, I don't know. We, I, we really I, want to talk about the wider application. Right, I think that if we mm -hmm. want to move forward with this universal design ordinance, it's got to be something that can be universally acceptable. And a builder or a contractor really wants to know a bottom line money wise. So what's the benefit to a home builder to use universal design? That's what they really want to hear. You know, they think it's too expensive. They think that they, they have to redesign the world in order to put it in. And, and that's why we need to say what we discover in our right. research. Right. That, and, right. and again, we're not saying, like you had mentioned, Sue, one time, give it as an option as a package deal. Yeah. This is what a UD design home is like. Here are the features, blah, blah, blah. Right. And, and versus features in the ABC home, you know. Right. Um, yeah. So I think so we, we think when... broadly, and that was why I was thinking, we need to think broadly. It's right. not just the disability or the, and we are a agent in place. That seems right. to be real popular. And, um, once we get a date, I've got, I was started to work on an outline, so I'll continue to work on that and get it to everybody. And then maybe we can sit, talk about the approach that we want to take and, and exactly how we want to present things to them. Yeah. And when you work on that, outline, maybe Sue and I, Sue and I and you can meet in an even through Zoom. We don't have to do this web apps thing. The three of us could just meet on Zoom one even to make sure we all on the right. same wave that. Right. Right. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, maybe we, uh, Cheryl and Sue and I will meet sometime when I get, get back from Florida. Okay. All right. Well, Just keep me. People. I am going to check my emails wherever I am. So you can send it to me anytime. Okay. Yeah. So well, we're just wait. We'll just wait to hear from Amy and uh, I'll keep working yeah. on my thing and we'll see where we go. Yep. And I'm thank good. you. Thank you, Amy, for helping to set this up. You're right. welcome. Yep. All right. I'll well, let you know as soon as I hear. Okay. Thank you. You too. Okay. Bye bye. 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 Keep cool. Bye. Keep cool.